Hey guys, welcome to episode 13 of the Sell Your Service podcast. I'm Mike Killen. This week I am joined by Eileen Lonergan, who is not only a WordPress developer and designer and runs a WordPress-based business, she also runs the Divi Theme user group on Facebook, which has exploded recently. So we're going to talk to her about the community of WordPress people that are out there, as well as how to kind of join and get involved with these communities, even setting them up, and of course, running a WordPress-based business. She has got a competition whereby she will give free consultation for anyone based on WordPress, or particularly the SEO SEO side of WordPress, as well as the Divi theme. Make sure to stick around for that, so she's giving away free consultation. In the meantime, let's not waste any more time and jump into it. Uh, hi everyone there, Mike from uh, Sales Service. I'm with Eileen Lonergan. Um, who I met through the Divi user WordPress group. There we go, trying to get it out. It's only six <laughs> o'clock and I'm already struggling. Um, before we get stuck into it, we have got a competition. Eileen's giving away consultation specifically around WordPress search engine optimization and the Divi theme. So we'll uh, tell you how you can take advantage of that later. In the meantime, Eileen, hello, how are you doing? I'm good, Mike. Thank you so much for having me. It's nice to see you. Yeah, you too. And thank you for joining us. This is this is something I've been really, really excited about, particularly around your uh, WordPress community that you've kind of built up and sort of dominated recently. Yeah. Before we get stuck into it, would you mind telling us a bit about yourself and a bit about your business? Sure. I design WordPress websites. I have an office out of my home. I've been doing this since 2009. Okay. I originally was a media buyer for an advertising agency okay. in in Boston, yep. and then I did that in Chicago, and I moved to London, and I worked as a media um, consultant, an yep. analyst. Yeah. Whereabouts for, in London? Um, right in, it was called Media Audits, and it was right off of um, Piccadilly in the in the oh, Soho wow. area. Yeah. 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 Excellent. Yeah, it was really fun. We lived in SW7, and, oh, you know, it was great. Probably was, trendy then. Yes, living the dream. <laughs> hated, hated, hated to leave. Um, but then after that, we moved to Asia, and we were there for a couple of years. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, we were in Singapore for three, and then Hong Kong. So when, when I got back to the States, I really had a big gap in my CV of years yeah. just sort of being out of the country, and... Now I'm like 50 miles so south of Boston and 30 miles east of Providence. Yep. So working at an agency wasn't really an option for me. The yeah. commute is, is brutal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I bet. So I started working for a friend who had um, a bunch of websites dedicated to golf and I became his Google AdWords person. Yep. And then we started writing newsletters and optimizing pages, and I would write blog posts for him. And then he moved into another direction, and I took the clients that he had and started just doing what I did for him for myself. Yeah. And then randomly, people, the, I, I was on the bar, board of my local library, and they said, oh, we need a new website. Can you make that for us? Yeah. So I said, sure, and, and it would, I did it in... What is that Microsoft like pages? Not pages, whatever that Microsoft program yeah, yeah, was yeah, that's like yeah. no, built don't, in. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't even know. I think so it runs, I did, is it on ASP or something like that? I, I honestly, yeah. I don't even know. And yeah. it was so overwhelming and stressful and endless. And then I found Squarespace. Yep. Yeah. And then uh, Facebook was emerging, and I connected with somebody I went to high school with, and yeah. he was building themes. Right. So he said, um, if you buy my, th you know, like we were just talking and then he said, you know, I'm doing this. If you buy my theme, I'll help you with WordPress. Cool. So it's like easy peasy, right? Yeah. And then it just sort of site after site after site. And here I am still doing it. So it's great. It, uh, what I love about that story is that it's so... Uh, maybe not the traveling to Singapore and London bit. That's quite, that's pretty awesome and out there. Uh, but the thing where you say, you know, I did it for a friend, and then eventually he said, "Can you help me?" And you're kind of like, "Okay, I'm, I, <laughs> I, I can accept money for that. That's fine." Was a part of you when you first started that like, "Oh my God, I can't believe someone actually wants to hand over money 
for me to do this or were you already pretty confident that's what you wanted to do no yeah yeah you're exactly right i was like what are they what is it that i'm walking <laughs> yeah. around yeah. that somebody thinks i could do that and yeah. i and and back when i did it for them on that whatever microsoft program yeah. i um had to ftp up the site onto the url yeah and I, you know they couldn't look at it beforehand they just well, I just said you know it's ready and I'm like all right like yeah. you know yeah. and I didn't I didn't know that I was reading all this FTP information and I was completely overwhelmed and by some magic it got up there yeah. and and yeah so exactly and then when the second person wanted one I was like well I can't I can't do it the way I did it the first time but I liked it you yeah. know I really liked it yeah so, um, no, and that's, and that's yeah. I think, yeah, common across a lot of WordPress businesses. The main thing that I find my customers struggle with is they don't have the confidence to believe that, oh my God, someone actually wants to hand over money for this. I'm like, believe me, if you think it was difficult at some point, other people now would find it impossible. So they would right. ha happily, you happily. do that, you know? Right, and I say this to people all the time, and, and you probably say the same thing. It's because it's easy for you, doesn't mean it's easy for everyone, and yeah. doesn't mean that you shouldn't charge for it. Yeah, absolutely. It doesn't matter if you're baking a cake or mowing a lawn or uploading sites <laughs> via FTP. Yeah. Just because you can do it doesn't mean it's it's easy. Yeah, it's also there's a level of, I think the, the, the thing that I'm now struggling with as a business is finding reliable suppliers mm -hmm. and if your business as a developer or designer or theme developer whatever you want to be is a reliable supplier that always delivers what they say they're going to do even if people can do it the fact that you're reliable they'll happily sell to go I want you to take that stress away from me and, and you just get the result for me you know yeah that's a great point um, yeah so that's that's kind of the, the way that I always position it to my uh, customers mm -hmm. so you not only run a WordPress business, you've also set up the Divi Theme User Facebook group. Right. Why? <laughs> it seems, I mean, this community, for those who don't know it, just check out the Divi Theme User groups. I think you can just find it on Facebook. It's just full of people who all they want to do is help each other. Everyone bangs on about the WordPress community, but this is so specific, it's about one theme. And people are going nuts over it. I know, I know. Well, I this this friend of mine that I mentioned earlier, his name is Don Campbell, and he and I went to high school together, and, and he formed a group around the theme that he created, which is the small business theme. And so I was, uh, and I still am absolutely, a, a member of that community. And it's so helpful to me on an, you know, a daily basis, like little bits of CSS or who knows somebody who can design logos or yeah. what's your favorite color, like all, just all that, all that stuff yeah. that you need to know when you're working independently. And I, a member of that group suggested the Divi theme, said, oh, check it out. So I went and bought it. It's not expensive. And I was coming up with some questions and I said, oh, I'm just going to form a group. And uh, I did. <laughs> talk about scratching and, your own itch. That's such right? a good, yeah. It was so, because I wanted people to help me yeah. and I and naturally am happy to share. I, it's just kind of who I am. If I know something and somebody asks a question, sure. I, that's just like happy to put it out there. So I just formed it like, you know, out of that. And then I commented and, and I invited the people from the other group to join this group. And they did. And I commented on a couple of posts on the Elegant Themes blog. Sure. And that was like a huge influx of people. And a couple of times, Elegant Themes have tweeted about it. Wow. I was going to say, what's, what's the level of engagement between you and Elegant? Because Elegant Themes are, in my eyes, they're, they're up there with... Um, Theme Forest and DeSing as a group of people who actually, that's really what they do, it's yeah. just themes and, and you know, they do it well. That's right. a pretty big almost endorsement, you know? I know, it's interesting because there's a, a, a one of the members in the group is Nick Roach, who's the developer. Yes. Yeah. And so, you know, he's not in the in the mud answering 
basic questions, but he he was there the night that they launched the the most recent update and answering questions and yeah. um, then there's also someone from the elegant themes for uh, forum yeah the, the support over there and he's in the group so um, but for the most part it's just like you and I who have either figured it out yeah. or want to be helpful and the community is massively impressive they're yeah. as you said really smart <laughs> yeah yeah this is i mean it's, it was kind of like there's a this your group and a couple of others and i kind of thought i know I, I know what i'm doing with wordpress and then i joined it it was like going to university again i was like oh my god i don't know anything there are some guys out here who are like genius right and to have That's access true. to them and to be able to just ask them it's crazy yeah. it is crazy because i think a big myth around wordpress is that it's easy yeah. and a lot of it once you know it is really easy yeah. and totally manageable but you know clients will ev there's never a client and you I'm sure can say the exact same thing there's never a client that wants exactly what y you've already <laughs> created for 10 other clients that would be amazing if they existed amazing. But <laughs> they I'd don't. so efficient right? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. so for every project which is the blessing of the of the job of the business you're always learning something new yep. but there and so once you you've got it you've got it typically but then there's you know they ask for something and you you've seen it on other websites yeah. and you know the next person's going to also want that question yeah so you know that's it's great to have these people what's the biggest challenge on running a wordpress based community like that um i feel like the group that we that you and I are part of the, mm. the Divi group is incredibly positive and supportive. Mm -hmm. I have gotten privately a couple of um, notes where people are not respectful, and wow. so I know, I know. So that's a little awkward. And then the approval process, I have to manually accept everyone. Right. And yeah, I bet that's a bit of a uh, yeah. drain on time more than anything. Uh, yeah, you know, like. If I get somebody like, you know, Michael Killen from the U UK and, yeah. you know, it's you on your surfboard, you're like, you know, and the header, like you immediately say, okay, that's all good. But, yeah, sometimes there's some not so polite stuff out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you don't want to just, yeah. So it, it is a time yeah. investment, but it, I don't let it. I don't spend a lot of time going through everybody's profiles, Good. you know, and if somebody reports somebody as a, I've, I've blocked a couple people. Yeah. Cause there's, there was another one, uh, I want to say intermediate WordPress. I can't remember. There's, 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 there are so many of them now. Yeah. Um, but the, I remember posting on, I, I remember saying, look, I'm looking for content writers, blah, blah, blah. This is what I do. And, uh, it's a way for you to get out there and, it, and I, I pay obviously. And I was hammered, and I I was I'm pretty good with communities, absolutely hammered. And I even had the admin saying this is spam. I was like, I swear on my life, if, <laughs> if no one likes it, that's fine. I am literally just offering like this group is exactly who I would want to write for right. my customers. I'm offering a hundred bucks per you know blog article if it gets through my editorial process. And yet on other on other sites, I see people literally just selling their stuff. Right. And I'm like how is this not being picked up and i think this is the thing about the divi group it's the only group i've come across where if there is something seen as uh, spam or aggressive the community kind of gets involved and says we don't think this is cool maybe it'd be best if you check with the admins first i mean i don't know what your relationship is if you've got you know i call them forum lieutenants but i don't know if you guys have had that or if it's got that big yet you know yeah right i've had a couple people ask if they would like um, me to make them admins and I have just kept it myself yep. for the time being because I don't feel overwhelmed or I don't feel as though people aren't getting what they need yep. um, so it just I think is easier right now at the moment but but I know what you mean I think that some people can just kind of like take I, you know I, I feel like there's a nice dose of humor and support in yeah. that group yeah but, that's a really but, yeah absolutely 
but yeah, I don't know. People sometimes I think, and and you know, we're in different countries, and and you're younger than I am, but I, you know, so maybe we come at things differently. But as, you know, sometimes I think people forget that it's really a human sitting there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I was having this, uh, having a conversation with, in fact, he's one of my earlier podcasts, Mark Jacobs, who's the mm-hmm. CEO of MeBox, uh, and. One of the big things he came across was like, you've got to remember behind all this technology and HD screens and all this, it's still a human being. That's ultimately who you're communicating with, right? Right, right. And would you shout out the person <laughs> in the cube next to you? <laughs> I hope I hope not, maybe. Yeah. I, haven't, I yeah. haven't worked in an office in a while, but yeah, I mean, everybody's just trying to, you know, figure it out. So what's, what's your, because the group almost promotes itself, but do you ever tell people about the group? What's, do you have like an elevator pitch for it or anything? Mm-mm. No, nothing. No, no, nothing. I mean, it's not monetized. So, yeah. you know, and at one point I even asked, like, are, is everybody happy? Do you want me to keep letting new people in? I, I, I haven't checked. Maybe there's 900, 800. Yeah. Um, you know, it could just be us. And this was like maybe around 500 or something. And, and everybody seemed really happy with the community and... I think what I, certainly what I'm seeing more and more of is like I'm way out in the sticks in the UK and there's there's pretty, probably no one else even in my county that does specifically what I do. So when I find groups like this, I'm like, oh my God, other people who want to talk about WordPress hooks? Yeah. I can't wait, like I'm straight <laughs> on. Like someone who wants to talk about a theme? Like my girlfriend can't stand it because like whenever I talk about business, I'm like, oh yeah, this is themes and plugins and this, and I want to talk heavy WordPress and heavy marketing. Um, yeah. like, do you know WP Elevation? No. So it's run by a guy called Troy Dean, uh, who's uh, Australian, and uh, he basically runs WordPress acceleration. So he helps people who run WordPress businesses do better. And when I first discovered that group, I was like, I'm allowed to talk about like WordPress, like functions.php here that's amazing <laughs> you know and I think that was the kind of cool thing especially with something like Divi which is almost a product in itself like it's so right. versatile you know right right I mean why, it, why why Divi for you why Divi well I really like the drag and drop elements yeah I really like, um, like their. I think their built-in forms are great. Yeah. I the portfolio elements are great. I mean, like you say, it's it's not just a out of the box theme, and I think that that's there's so many specific elements that people yeah. are are using, and and even the other day somebody was asking about setting up the pricing table. Yeah. And you know that's right there. You don't need a plugin for it, and. I've set one up before and you see like, oh, this there is a little learning curve here. Yeah. So um, that's, it's fun to talk about that. It's fun and I like reading everything because I'm always learning and I think, oh my gosh, like I didn't, I didn't know this or I'm so happy to know that everybody else who's trying to put in a full screen slider, it's getting cropped. Yeah. Like I, you know, I thought it was me. And yeah. like you say, it's like, oh wow, I've got people here. Yeah, no, absolutely, and that and that's the, everyone talks about the power of the WordPress community in general. But I think your group is is just a great example of, frankly, how it's done properly and how it should be done, you know, correctly and stuff. And yeah, I think the more people who are, I think it was on the group earlier, someone put uh, how it's the, the second best job you can have outside of having a university degree or something like that is a WordPress developer. And a lot of people are doing it like us from home. They set up an office in home. But that maybe means they're a bit splintered off from right. larger businesses. So this is a great way for them to be able to still, you know, talk to other businesses. Right. And I, I'm putting together a blog post now on questions to ask potential clients. Yep. And as I'm doing that, I'm also thinking questions potential clients should ask you and I. Yep. Yep. And, and one of them is, you know, like, what's your backup plan? Where, how are you learning and, That's good. and right? Yeah. And so I That's think really if you good. say, I, you know, I'm part of these support groups online and, and tell people that this kind of stuff is out there. Yeah. And, and I know I, from my other group, 
that there's a lot of collaborating going on. Yeah. And there's a lot of, I'm going to hire this guy when I need this bit done, or somebody's going to hire me when they need that bit done. Yeah. And that goes on a lot. Yeah. And, and if you are in a business pitch and you say to somebody, um, you know, well, it's, I'm a sole entrepreneurship or a sole business, but I have people that I 1099 at the end of the year. Yeah. It makes you from, you know, this... Yeah. To this, especially when we are working around the globe, like you know, you have clients all over the world. Yeah, yeah, and, and saying to people, oh, I, I have a network of SEO specialists, mm -hmm. WordPress specialists, right. marketing specialists, and when you say to them, and of course you'll have access to them, you know, when you take right. me on because anything goes through, it does. It's a completely different position as opposed to being one or two guys sort of working out of a garage. You're now yeah, yeah, part exactly of a, a larger community or even a workforce. You know, I, I see a lot of people coming onto the group and other groups saying, I can't do this, is there anyone else who can you know, take this on for me? And it happens, and I think that's amazing to create a community marketplace like that. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Bringing it back, this is one of my favorite questions, because I always like to ask this question. Way before the Facebook group, what did you want to be as a child? What did you want to be as a kid? Rich. <laughs> yes. That's a hell of a Living objective. on the feet, <laughs> lots of staff, yeah. I, you know, I, um, all of that. But I, I did, when I went to university, I studied advertising, yeah. and I loved it. I just loved it. I worked on, an, um, on Newberry Street in Boston for an advertising agency, and that was just great. And I, I'm still friends with those people, yeah. and I still connect with them and, and laugh with them and they're all doing great stuff and so that that was awesome yeah yeah I bet yeah, yeah. basically when like again you find a because once you leave college university and, and you start getting a job with other people who like doing the same stuff as you there's there is something quite magical that happens there you know yeah I think so too and especially you know I finally like no homework yeah no stress yeah <laughs> I had a paycheck. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> right? We'd all go out. Uh, there was loads of single people. We'd all go out yeah. after work. And, yeah. um, you know, we, there was a gym right there, and yeah. we'd work out. And then we'd all go and have, you know, drinks and hamburgers. And, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think that's, that's something I definitely miss from working in London is, yeah, pretty much doing, doing that, going to the gym and then going for drinks afterwards. That was always good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, what about what about the the internet? When did you first discover the web? Yeah, well, actually, it was really exciting because I it was exciting for me. But we, my husband and I were living in Singapore, uh -huh. and and he worked in finance, and so he needed to be connected. He's he's a in the global financial stuff. So we were we we had a computer, and we were all hooked up. Yeah. And and in Singapore, <clears throat> excuse me, we were we were on the dial up. So. You know, if you were on the computer, you couldn't be on the phone. Phone at the same time, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And um, we, I re like, you know, you'd go to dinner parties and people would be talking about it. And we lived in Singapore at the time where, I don't know if it's still like this, but there was definitely censorship of, of everything. Yeah. And, and so, yeah. you know, somebody said, well, don't type sex into the <laughs> bar, you know, like that's, you're going to be the police will The police will come after you, yeah. That's, yeah, the internet police, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, back then we did it, we'd be searching for recipes or I was trying to um, build a website and I had this little, I had this great friend, Jennifer, and, and she had a baby and upstairs this woman worked for Microsoft and I, we didn't know it, I just knew she had a baby and I invited her over. Yeah. She said, oh, I work for Microsoft, and, and Jennifer and I were like, oh, do you know how to build a website? <laughs> <laughs> She's like, wait a minute, I thought like you were talking about, you know, diapers and where to walk the baby, yeah. and yeah. yeah, so it's really exciting, and, and then we moved to Singapore, or to Hong Kong, mm. and, you know, we were really connected, we had the high speed connection, somebody yeah. from the office came over, and, and it was great, so, you know, we plan our holidays and look for vacations and that kind of stuff it always i mean I, when i was growing up it was kind of the the internet had been around and 
we were maybe the first group of kids to sort of adopt it from the age of like one. I mean, now you're on Facebook, you know, as a sonogram. So you're on, you're on the internet. You're on the internet before you're even a human being now. But you know, we were doing all this kind of stuff when we were kids, and. I remember th thinking I'm not going to take I'm not going to take this for granted. But now, I get like uh, teenagers and guys who have just come out of college apply for design roles and stuff. My first question is, does the sound of a dial-up modem annoy you? And if they go, I don't know what dial-up is. I'm like, get out, get out of my office. I'm not interested. Um, so it's a funny kind of. I think there's like a, a gap gap or a barrier of when people go, what an amazing new tool to. This is just like something we just, you have, isn't it? We just have. It's ubiquitous. Yeah. 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 So did you ever do programming in, in your studies, or what was your... Uh, so when I was at the equivalent, I guess, of, of high school, um, around GCSE, so when I was 15, I wrote a program in our IT class to get into the school's network. Not maliciously. I didn't. I certainly didn't intend it to be malicious. <laughs> but it was just. Yeah. I was like. It was part of the report. It was like do something with computers that you enjoy. And I happened to be super good at it. So I wrote it up. And I was then banned from using computers until the age of eighteen. Like a, a legal thing. I wasn't. I was told I wasn't allowed to use it. No. So it completely halted. I was just not interested in in doing it anymore. And then I rediscovered it around college university time. Um, so I reckon I would have gone on a completely <laughs> different path. And I, I never did it to be malicious. I was just like, hey, I really know how to you know, access a back door and get in through an infrastructure like this. Right. Um, but isn't that, who? what is the name of uh, Jack, I'm drawing a blank on his last name, from Twitter? Isn't that how he got his first gig? There's he a ton, yeah. Gig? Yeah, there's right? A, yeah, there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot to be, I mean, I'm way, way out of the loop. And, you know, I don't want anyone hacking my site to drive and test or anything. <laughs> yeah, right, um, right, right, exactly. I'm, I'm way out of the loop. This was this was a long time ago, you know, when you could even just get a list of directories from people. Yeah, yeah. Um, but now I went back to my old school to give a talk on, you know, how incredible and successful and handsome I've now become. <laughs> exactly. Obviously. And they now learn programming from about the age of 10, I think. Uh -huh. uh, and I was kind of like, that's amazing because it's like a language now it's no longer right. this weird thing that a few people with you know skin problems do it's like this <laughs> it's like this serious you know you you have to know it now yeah well i in my high school curriculum i had to write a program for um, buying an airline ticket wow honestly i thought <laughs> i wasn't going to graduate i could never remember the semicolon yeah 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 Gosh. Yeah. yeah 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 like looking for people in the hall to help me out yeah yeah and that's you know it's i'm now i used to be super sort of like no it's my code and my designs and then as, as now as time's gone on I'm, i've run my business i'm kind of like uh design isn't my forte i'll do the coding now i'm like my god coding isn't my forte like there are these 18 year olds out there who just dominate me so i'm like i would just i'll give you a load of money and you just do a better job than me you know uh and it's nice to it's it's interesting going through the code and picking up what I would consider like quite rookie mistakes when people put way too much stuff in I'm like that can be shortened but yeah. ultimately you know there's a lot of people out there and I think it's important for people to embrace if you're not good at something there are going to be people out there who are good at it and you can pay them to take that stress away from you right you know right yeah I totally totally agree outsourcing is fine yep absolutely and uh, yeah so that's that's kind of my interpretation on the web and where it's going but what what about your your business what's next for your business what's next for your website um you know i really love my blog yep. and i i think a lot of people come to that divi group because they find divi information on my blog um and what's the address for that and we'll, we'll put that link in yep eileenlonergan.com yep very, very straightforward. Okay. So I, I love working on my blog. I love building sites and working with clients. Um, so it is interesting, though, because you kind of always want to be thinking of the, of the next thing and growing and yeah. just for your own interest and, and keeping it fresh. Yeah. Yeah. It's hey. a hard question, though. I don't know. I like Oh. <laughs> this is this is like this is my my favorite question to answer. Like I've I've always got something 
Like I'm like, yeah, this is what I'll do next. It's actually the stuff that I should be doing today that I tend to ignore now. I'm like, no, I'll do that some other time. Yeah. <laughs> but um, the fact that I think the fact that you like your blog, I think is, I think it's almost unique. Like I know most people go, I have to write a blog, so I'll write a blog. But if right. you like it, I do like it. I think it's really interesting. I've always wished that I could work for a magazine. I interviewed at Vogue when I was in London and yeah. you know, I didn't get that gig and I like always felt sad about it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the one that got I, away, yeah. The one that got away, yeah. So I, I do, I really, really like it. I think it's, uh, but you know, I think you're absolutely right. I think a lot of people see it as a chore and I think that they really um, miss the opportunities because I think yeah. there's a lot of low-hanging fruit for businesses to write about and you know I tell clients all the time if you've answered any question in an email during the week yes yeah. that's your blog post yeah yeah I, I, again going back to the you might think it's simple right. but other people don't I did I think I did a post on how to write a good blog post you did that was headline. a great Yes, I loved that post. People went nuts over it. I was like, I did, yeah. oh my God, I consider this like rudimentary. <laughs> like if I don't do this, my blog post will fail. And people just couldn't get enough of it. Um, and it's that's, I think, what people need to go back to. I have no idea about taxes or accountants or whatever. And my accountant every once in a while sends me an email like, Mike, you need to do this next. Oh, thank you so much. It's so easy. <laughs> you know? Right. What about right. uh, if there was one thing you could fix about your business? So I've got this magic wand. What would that I've be? I've got a magic wand. Um, I think that there is actually a disconnect between a lot of my clients and my blog readers. I, I huh. blog a lot about um, WordPress. Mm -hmm. And so I have a lot of readers who are in the same business as I am. Yep. And I think I should blog more on running a small business yeah. or the marketing of small business or being in, in business. And I think that would be more beneficial to my clients. Yeah, absolutely. I tend, yeah, I send that stuff out in an email newsletter. Um, but I think that that's my big, uh, like if I could do it over again, I think it'd be, I would have been more targeted yeah, it's in funny my... you should mention that because it's uh, when I talk to other like WordPress and web design businesses, I say you shouldn't be selling WordPress. You should be selling the end result, like right? sell the fact that they'll get more leads or whatever it is. And a lot of us then go, okay, that's great. And then when we go back to the blog, we go back to talking about WordPress. You know, and I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> yeah. it's the same it's a similar yeah. process and the similar idea and I, I see a, a lot of people writing these amazing stuff about WordPress and I think I don't know if your customer's going to get much out of that right you know but it's tough to make that switch you know I mean this is something I'm finding extremely difficult with the say a service blog yeah yeah I like your blog I think you're doing a great job thank you that's good to know I don't get feedback like that very often but uh, no that's really nice thank you very much yeah. um Last question before we jump into the lightning round. What do you do when you're not working? Well, I have three children. So that then. So, that. so <laughs> yeah. And I have a dog and, and so. Proper nuclear drive. family. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. We've got it all. The front lawn, the boat. Yeah. <laughs> Very. Awesome. That's so good. All there. Yeah. And what do they do? The children? Yeah are all still in school. Okay. I have one who will be at university next year, but they're all three at home. So that literally is what takes up most of your time when you're not working then? Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. I, have nothing, good. I, I don't have kids, so I have nothing to compare it to. Okay. <laughs> it's all good. It's great. Uh, I think a friend of mine, he recently had a baby, his wife's pregnant again. He equated having a baby to having a blender without the lid on that sometimes turns itself on. Yeah, no yeah, spontaneously. Yeah. Like you're sitting having a lovely meal and then what what the hell happened there? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> awesome. Okay, I'll try and keep some hobbies in the meantime. I think. Okay. <laughs> um, the lightning round, I don't know why I call it that. It's become a farce now because I'm always the one who goes off on tangents. The idea is we'll try and answer these questions as quickly as possible, but I'm always the one who's like, oh, that sounds really cool. Can we explore that? Okay. Anyway, what's the first thing that any business that uses WordPress should know? 
that you have to optimize all your pages mm -hmm. and your content. And if you don't take advantage of blogging or adding new content, it's really a missed opportunity for your business. Yeah, and then you'll wonder why your stuff doesn't appear anywhere. Shocking. Yeah, there we go. right. Yeah. Um, what's the most successful way you found customers? 50% um, through my blog and 50% word of mouth. Wow, 50% through your blog. That's yeah. really high. It's really high. I would write about how you managed to do that. I mean, <laughs> that's mental. I don't know how you've done that. That's brilliant. Oh, all right. Good to know. Yeah, no, that's that's way high. I mean, again, I would say the majority of blogs don't generate any income at all or any leads at all. Um, so if you, you know, have done that, I'd write about that. There you go. There's your next blog post. That's all I do. <laughs> okay, I got to go. I got <laughs> Yeah, done. We're off. See you later. Um, how do you stop competing on price? Don't start. Awesome. No, I like that. We'll keep it like that. Uh, business cards, yes or no? Can you see? <laughs> oh, wow. Are those yours uh, or other people's? Those are mine. Those are yours? Yeah. So, I mean, I guess like I feel compelled to get them, but I don't hand them out. And and d depends on where you are. Like. Whatever you do, if you go to WordCamp, don't hand them out. Yeah, no, I, I, okay, so we'll say yes, you've got hundreds of them. I've but got, the fact I've got you, hundreds. The fact that you've got hundreds of them, <laughs> right. Um, how can you convert users who visit your site into customers? Um, well, I think you need to solve a problem. So if I have a blog post on, um, I, I had a blog post that I wrote on creating a website for a liquor store yeah and, and and i can't even tell you how many liquor store people i got through that really uh, yeah and i wrote a blog post on a client that has a food truck yeah. and i got a bunch of business on on that so if you solve a problem then we well, see this is where i think your blog goes right when we were talking earlier about who's your customer if you position it the other way around and if you write, okay, this is how you should do a website for liquor stores. Other liquor stores aren't gonna go, well, I need to find a website designer who can do these things. I'd go straight to the source and be like, well, you seem to actually educate other people on how to do it, so can I just hire you? That's, yeah? And yeah. Solving a problem, absolutely. Best thing you can do, I think. Really good, yeah. Uh, favorite project management tip? Yeah, this is hard. Loads and loads and loads of people, they just want to email. For me yeah. to keep it organized, um, it depends on the client and sort of how kind of their comfort level. I, for myself, use Trello and I manage things in there. Yeah. Um, I've had clients that want to use Basecamp. Yeah. That, um, or, you know, we could do a Dropbox. I have some that want to use Google Docs, yep. which is great. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I have others that just like will email me. Yeah. Here's everything you need. So, I, I'm you know if if somebody else has a better idea, I'm all open for that one. Yeah. Because it's it's hard. It. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Particularly when I get one person say, "Oh, you've got to use Asana." And then I use it a little bit, and I'm like, mm, it's not really. In fact, a guy who I spoke to last week, Pete from This Is Tap, they're like a WordPress hosting company, they're gonna be releasing a thing, and from what I've seen, that looks exactly how I was wanting to look, you know, use some kind of project management. But yeah, tools. Ultimately, there are tools out there, that's what we're trying to right. say. Right, cool. right. Um, how do you keep customers on track? Yeah, that's a hard one also. I have written in my contract that if a project goes beyond a certain timeline, like generally six weeks, yeah. and it hasn't been launched because they haven't given me the materials yeah. that are needed, then I'm going to build them anyway. Awesome. I like that a lot. Yeah. So that, you know, I don't like to be, I you feel a little jerky about it, but it kind of gets them right into action. I love launching. Yep. Love it, love it, love it. Yep. <laughs> so Lawyer, solicitor, accountant, they've all got the exact same uh, jurisdiction. If you, if you don't 
what make it a two-way process and if you don't take my, me seriously I'm afraid you know I have to bill you I've got other customers right no. and and I'll, I'll say to people you know you you're in my queue so I either have to tell other people I'm sorry I yeah. can't work with you or push them back you know it's just a very time-consuming process yeah. so uh, and and people generally are are pretty good I have I have there's a few industries that I think are a little bit harder than others but we you know. we'll, we'll mention them offline because I know okay, yeah, I good. know exactly we'll what chat. industries you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> okay. um, do you have a referral system? If so, how does that kind of work? Um, I generally will send a thank you something to somebody who has sent me business, yep. either an Amazon gift card or nice. a uh, Starbucks yep. something, or you know, um, sometimes I'll give them and uh, some of my time yep. as as a thank you. Um, but I'm, I do not have a, a, a process where I send like a follow-up email, yeah, yeah. thank you, and if you refer my services, I'll give you a hundred bucks. But you definitely I don't, I don't, reward it though. I do. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I'm very, very grateful for referrals. Yeah. No, I like that. That's good. Really nice. Uh, how do businesses differentiate themselves? How can people like us be unique? People like us who are working in the web business, web, like yeah, create digital creatives, you know. Yeah. Well, I think kind of back to our conversation earlier, being human, and showing who you are. Yeah. Because if people say, you know, I I think he's a good guy, or I I think that she seems like a, you know a nice person, or she seems like she has a sense of humor, or she, you know, is responsive yeah. or consistent like you know I can say to people I'm I've got something I've got over 300 blog posts on my blog like I'm I'm wow. consistent <laughs> I'm, yeah. you can rely on me you know yeah. so I think just be yourself and there's gonna be people who want to work with you because they like you absolutely yeah no I couldn't put it by myself that was the lightning round I'm quite impressed I think we did really well yeah okay. it, was. it was super <laughs> fast fire. <laughs> um, what about the future of your business? Where do you see that kind of, you know, going off? Yeah, I I don't know what's the what. I guess you know I'm happy happy for any web design projects that come my way, and um, you know, like I said, I'd like to work maybe a little bit more on my blog, yep. and. Um, and also, I'd like to maybe figure out a way to make this Divi group something. You know, maybe a digital agency, yeah. and, and we certain people throw their hats in for different elements, yeah. and then go after bigger projects. Um, you know, there's some like we we keep going back to it, but there's some people in the group that just come out with these yeah. sites or these code, and I feel like God, I I want to be on their team. Yeah. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. I know exactly yeah. what you mean, yeah. Um, what about the future of WordPress? Where do you see that? Well, I, I bought a virtual ticket to WordCamp San Francisco yep. for 10 bucks. How was that? <laughs> it was good. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, it was really good. Um, and I listened to Matt's speech, mm -hmm. and I think, is it 23% that he said WordPress is powering 23% of websites? Yep. Uh, in the UK, it's actually 60%. Uh, yeah. yeah so glo globally, it's 20%. Yeah. Okay. So I think it's, a, you know, and we, we talked about this a little bit in another group I'm in, and I think it's got to level off. Yeah. So I think it's, there's, you know, there's a lot of people that are coming into WordPress design, mm -hmm. and I think it's going to, I think it's going to shake out and, you know, maybe it was really easy to get into it, and I think that that the people that are committed and have a long term are probably going to continue to do really well. Yeah. And I think that the, but the platform itself, I don't know how it can continue to grow. Mm. You know, Squarespace is doing really well. Wix is doing really well. They're yeah. both easy to use. Yeah, it's funny because I think one of the topics of conversation we had, Mike Little. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, our UK work camps obviously and he's mentioned and a couple of other guys have mentioned about moving into the app space mm. about becoming an app and there is press app app presser I can't mm -hmm. remember something like that 
that basically takes a WordPress site and turns it into an app. Um, so I think that's maybe the next step, but that seems so ethereal. It's like, it's more like, wouldn't this be a nice idea as opposed to this is the next stage within the business, you know? Right. Yeah. I don't, that's a good, it's a good question. It's really interesting. And it's so difficult because so many people, the community, this is the, if, the, if they have one gripe with the WordPress community, it's that they feel no one can own it and make money from it, but we as the community do own it. So you can't change it. And I find that very difficult to contend with sometimes because I think you've, you've got to evolve and you've got to change whether you like mm -hmm. it or not. Yeah. Customers actually don't care whether you use WordPress or not. They just want more leads, more right. business, whatever. Right. You know? Right. And if you do slow down or stop or don't change, you're going to get stumpled all over. Yeah. You know, but um, no, it's a tough one. I'm, no one's ever given me a cohesive answer that I'm <laughs> like, oh, that's it then. So, see now in, we know. Yeah. See you in 15 years. I do. Um, <laughs> Competition-wise, uh, Eileen has very kindly giving away her consultation experience on both running a WordPress business and, and running a WordPress site, search engine optimization as well, and both can be, they don't have to be, but they can be around the Divi theme as well. Yeah, absolutely. Do you want to give us, talk a little bit more about it? Sure, we, we can meet, we can review your website, and I, I just actually put a blog post up the other day how I was a coach to a coach. He he had a Divi theme, and he is a swimming coach, and and so I helped him sort of with the finishing touches on his Divi theme site. And I'm happy to do that with somebody. Or if you want to just do a site review, if you're not on the Divi theme and you want to do a site review, we can look at your back end stuff or um, your search engine optimization, how you have that set up, or you know if you're just getting started, if you want to ask questions on how to find a client or manage clients or what to blog about, what, you know, awesome. I'm open. Awesome, okay, well, what we'll do is if people get involved in the comments below, okay. uh, usually I say, what would your next blog post be? So we have people suggest what your next blog post would be. Oh, I like it. You like that, cool, like good. It. Because now you've given me an idea yeah. and then. <laughs> and that's just how it works. And I'll bill yeah. you for that, don't worry. Okay. I'll just send you an invoice <laughs> for that, that's fine. I'm ready. Um, okay. So yeah, guys, get involved in the comments below regarding what the next blog post should be for Eileen's blog, uh, specifically around WordPress. In the meantime, what's the first thing that you think any startup business should know? Um, well, you know, this is interesting because I think it actually, people say this all the time, but uh, you know, it, it takes a while to get going. Yeah. So, so be prepared. And also, you know, just because you've launched your site doesn't mean you're getting, uh, you know, thousands of visitors a day. <laughs> no, no. You know, so, nice. so, so it's very difficult for people to reconcile what needs to be perfect. Mm -hmm. And I, it depends on what your business is and who you are as to what bits do need to be perfect. Yeah. But it's... It's better, and I think you've said this on the show before, it's better to launch and get something out there and, and just start and and be prepared because it takes a while. Yeah, no, that's really good. No, I like that, actually. Um, yeah, be prepared. It's not... I think because in the news, particularly for... I suffered with a bit of a, a crisis about it, sort of. I was like, I would see loads of guys at the age of 22, 23 making these multi-billion dollar startup yeah. businesses and I'd be like, man, I, at the time, I was like, I'm 26, I haven't done anything like that yet. <laughs> you know, I still work out of home and these guys have got multi-billion dollar offices. That's annoying. And it is annoying. But it's completely, again, the reason it makes the news is because it doesn't happen that often. It's actually, right. it's complete. It's like, yeah, that's not the way. Lightning in a bottle. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah. People don't yeah. run businesses that way. Right. You know. Right. So no. There's, it's much better to be slow and steady. Yeah consistently because if you're just going for that you know 22 million dollar buyout which yeah i think we both would yeah. love <laughs> that would be fine with me that would be fine but it's so much wasted energy yeah. in in paying the electric bill next month precisely is looming precisely. right precisely yeah no i really like that um how can people reach out to you well, my website is EileenLonergan.com. Yep. I am on Twitter. I'm on LinkedIn. What's your Twitter they handle? Eileen Lonergan. Awesome. Uh, I know. I'm not one of these creative No, 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 no. 
people. Uh, my Twitter, yep. Mike Killen, and I'm, I'm going to be launching MikeKillen.com. About, apparently, okay. they get way more traffic. Like the person gets way more traffic than the brand. Apparently. Okay. So. Okay. Good. Um, and I'm on Google Plus, LinkedIn. Yep. Join the Facebook group. Yep. The, mo the more the merrier. That was a, a over overwhelmingly re you know positive. Yep. Awesome. Vote no, by the group. I would uh, yeah happily uh, recommend the uh, the group. Who do you think I should interview next? Um, you know who's one of my favorite UK-based people is um, Eamon Fitzgerald yeah. of Naked Wines. Are you familiar with Naked Wines? I am. It's a subscription yeah. wine service. Yeah. And he didn't. So, he didn't have anything to do with wine, and then he set it up, and people were like, "That's definitely not going to work." And that was like this amazingly successful model. Is that right? He he didn't actually set it up, but he is the COO. And and he, I helped him launch his blog. Oh, awesome! And then he got discovered, and now he's got this killer job. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. So he's a great one. And then from our group, um, uh, Gino is a really yeah. hot ticket with the coding. Yeah. He knows a lot, and he's a really nice guy. And then Melissa Love is a really I think a really talented designer who's based, I think she's in London. Cool, no, that's cool. Yeah, she does, um, she also makes child themes out of the Divi theme. Yeah, oh, perfect, that's really yeah. good. That'd yeah. be a really good topic, actually, yeah, I'd like that. Uh, right, let me jot those down, perfect. In the meantime, Eileen, thank you so much for being on the thank show. Thank you, it was so fun. Yeah, it was, it was good fun. I loved I'll, it. Um, <clears throat> Other than that, guys, remember getting involved in the comments below. Give some uh, topics of conversation and blogging for Eileen. In the meantime, thank you very much again, and I shall say good day. Okay, awesome. Bye thank now. you very much, Bye. Mike. Bye. Hey guys, how brilliant was that? Uh, it was an absolute pleasure talking to Eileen, and I think what she's giving away is absolutely brilliant um, consultation and you know getting to talk through WordPress and the Divi theme and running a business so I genuinely think you should get involved in the comments below and try and go ahead with that in the meantime make sure that you check out uh, one of our most recent light bulb moments which is the two sentence email that you can send after sending a WordPress proposal uh, to guarantee that you get a response back next week I've got Bridget O'Reilly from digitalmarketer.com anyone who knows me knows I'm a massive fan of them in the meantime thank you so much to Eileen and I hope to see you all soon thank you